Good day, Grade 12. Welcome to this next lesson in physical science. In this lesson, we're going to continue going through a couple of exam paper questions. Um, it's basically just Redux. It's this one, this one, and that one. Yep, three questions. And then once we've finished those three questions, we're going to move on to electrodynamics. Um, I do feel it's important that we go through these questions because they basically just help us to realize what we've been doing um, so far this year. This is the last few questions. And then we're going to move on to the work that we still haven't covered. Um, OK, so it says consider the electrochemical cell below. OK, electrode Y in half cell B Okay, is an inert metal, inert metal. Okay, for the chemical electrochemical reaction, write down one function of the salt bridge. Okay, let's talk about the salt bridge. The salt bridge does a couple of things. The one is it completes the circuit. Okay. And then the second thing it does, which is kind of a two-folder, it allows for the free flow of ions between the two half cells. And what does that mean? It means that that means it's going to maintain, it helps maintain the neutrality in each of the half cells. So therefore it helps maintain the neutrality of the two half cells. So here's the thing, grade 12, if I had to ask you for one function, I honestly would probably go for complete a circuit. If you're going to go for this lot, you need to write these two together. And it's kind of sneaky. If they say to you, write down three functions of the salt bridge, then you want to do all three. You want to complete the circuit, allows for the free flow, and helps maintain the neutrality of the two half cells. If they ask you for two, you write, complete the circuit, and then this you put as one whole function okay so they do want to see all of this when they want to know all the functions of the salt bridge okay it doesn't matter whether they ask for two or three this is all that you write okay so now let's erase all that and let's talk about the next thing it says we've done that it says the voltmeter reading when the cell re action reaches equilibrium okay so let's think about this what happens with dynamic equilibrium or with equilibrium do you agree that there's now no longer a change in the concentration and if there's no longer a change in the concentration there will no longer be a transfer of electrons and you notice they don't say dynamic equilibrium they just say equilibrium so what actually happens is that the voltmeter reading is zero and when the cell has reached equilibrium we effectively say the cell is flat so when i say to you oh the battery's died or it's flat it's no longer giving voltage what has actually happened is that the cell reaction has reached equilibrium now it says name give a name or formula of the inert metal y okay so it says consider the electrochemical cell below electrode y in the half cell is an inert metal it's a metal that doesn't participate in the reaction so it could be platinum for example that would be a good example of a, a metal that does not participate in reactions okay now it says the name or formula of the oxidizing agent the name or formula of the oxidizing agent okay so if you look at this do you see they've told you which electrode is positive and which electrode is negative? Okay, so now what you need to do is work out whether or not the electrons are going, which way the electrons are going. Okay, so if this electrode is negative, it means that the electrons are... I'm going to think about this. So if this is positive, because you've got red cat reduction occurring at the cathode, and you've got oxidation occurring at the anode. Okay. Now, I know that a lot of you would learn that the cathode is always positive when with one and the anode is always negative with the other. But here's the thing, grade 12, they swap. 
okay? If you are looking at Redox tape, I mean Redox, if you're looking at Ox, oh, let me try again. If you're looking at galvanic cells versus um, electrolytic cells, the signs for the cathode and anode swap. So you need to be very, very, very careful about whether or not you're talking about anodes or cathodes. Okay, so if we look over here, we've got that this dude here, oopsie, sorry, is negative and this dude here is positive. So therefore the reaction for this side has to be going from the X to the X Three plus, because what is happening is that this is gaining electrons from the solution. So what is actually happening, hang on, let me just show you, is the half reaction that's occurring on this half cell A is X is going to X three plus and giving three electrons away. That is what's happening at this side okay then the electrons are traveling along to the positive electrode okay so what is happening on this side is that we have got the fe3 plus is going to be going to fe2 plus so the fe3 plus is going to gain an electron to become Fe2+. And I'm not balancing these at the moment. I'm just showing you what is happening in the two half cells. Okay, so do you agree that this year, because this is giving away electrons, this must be oxidation happening here? This is oxidation. And therefore, what is happening here is reduction. This is reduction. Okay, so therefore, this is the cathode. And this is the anode. Okay, so if the reduction is occurring here, what is the oxidizing agent? The oxidizing agent is the one that's being reduced. So Fe3 plus is being reduced to Fe2 plus. Therefore, Fe3 plus has to be the oxidizing, oxidizing agent. Guys, so you're welcome to go around and learn that in a galvanic cell such as this, the anode is negative and the cathode is positive, and then in the electrolytic cell it's opposite. I do, however, worry about learning things like that because it shows, first of all, that there's a kind of a lack of understanding because what happens then is you're just learning that the anode is negative and the cathode is positive for these types of cells and you're not understanding the reaction. Okay, maybe you are, but you're still learning it. Secondly, what I worry about is that if you don't understand it and you get into an exam situation and the exam situation gets you nervous and then suddenly you can't remember if the anode is negative with a organic galvanic cell or if it's negative with electrolytic cell. written it out there.
Um, right, I apologize for this. Um, I apologize for the break. The Skype thing had a nervous breakdown, um, but I'm back. And let's carry on. So now, the next question is, I've done that. That's there. That is the half reaction. Fe3 plus plus E minus goes to Fe2 plus. Next, it says the initial EMF of the above chemical, electrochemical cell under standard conditions is 0.83. It says identify metal X by calculation. Okay, so what you need to do is go and look at your formula sheet. And if you go and look at your formula sheet, it's very nice because they tell you E theta of your cell, your EMF of the cell, is equal to E theta of the cathode minus E theta of the anode. Okay, so the E theta of the cell is 0, 0,83. We've already identified Fe3 plus going to Fe2 plus as the cathode. So what we need to do is go find our redox table. I know this is really small, but you guys should all have your own one. And if you look very carefully, you can see this Fe3 plus plus two electrons goes to Fe, which is not the one we want. There is Fe3 plus plus three electrons goes to Fe. That's not the one we want. Um, and there should be another one that goes Fe3 plus goes to Fe2 plus. Hang on a minute. Aluminium, manganese, chromium, zinc, chromium, Fe2 plus, Cr. Of course, I can't find it now. Copper, 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 iron, dean. There it is. Fe3 plus plus, three, plus an electron goes to Fe2 plus is at plus 0.77. That is plus 0.77 minus e theta of the anode will give, well, this will give me the e theta of the anode. So if I take that across, I get 0, 0.83 minus 0, 0.77 is equal to minus e theta, or the EMF of the anode. So that becomes, what is that? That's three and three, it's, can't be. Um, Okay, let's put that on our calculators and have a look. Oh, sorry, let's try again. Um, am I just checking that there? That's E cathode 0.83. Okay, let's go. So it's 0.83. Mm, let's try again. Delete 83 minus 0.77 is going to be 0 0.06. 0, 0, 6 equals E theta of the anode. Can we check something? Okay, so then we go look, and there it is. Okay, 0, 0, 0, 6. So therefore, interestingly enough, the other one is Fe3 plus plus three electrons goes to Fe. So this one is also going to be iron, but it's going to be Fe3 plus plus three electrons goes to Fe. And you'll notice that this is supposed to be three plus, so yay, it works, yay, 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 yay. Um, except that it'll be going the other way, sorry go in the other way. Now it says write down the cell notation of the cell. So now we can write down the cell notation of the cell because of the fact that we have two half reactions. So it's going to be Fe goes to Fe3 plus salt bridge and then it goes Fe3 plus dash Fe2 plus and remember you always have to write in one mole per decimeter cubed, and then one mole per decimeter cubed. You always have to write that in at the bottom, okay? Because that shows your concentration, right? And that it's under standard conditions. Right, let's do the next question. Now you've got two different cells, note the difference. This is obviously a galvanic cell because we've got two halves and we've got a salt bridge, okay? 
And these are obviously electrolytic cells. Also, what gives it away is that these are the power supplies, whereas this has got a voltmeter. And that's the main reason, okay, because this is a voltmeter, means we are getting electrical energy out of it. Whereas, yeah, we having to provide electrical energy to make something happen. Okay, so we've got two different cells, A and B, are shown in the diagram. Cell A contains a concentrated solution of sodium chloride. And cell B contains a concentrated solution of copper 2 chloride, CuCl2. And P, Q, R, and S are identical carbon electrodes. Now, there is a reason why we use carbon electrodes and the reason is that they tend to be inert so they do not participate in the reaction okay now it says before we work out where it says chlorine gas is formed at p and s so we get chlorine gas bubbling off here and we get chlorine gas bubbling off here so we've got cl2 gas given off here and you've got cl to gas given off here. Okay, first of all, is cell electrolytic? We've already discussed it. Yes, it is, and why? Because the conversion is from electrical to chemical because we've got a power supply. Now it says, write down the equation for the half reaction taking place at Q. Write down the half reaction for the taking place at Q. Okay, so do you agree we've got NaCl2, I mean Cl, which is breaking up into Na plus ions plus Cl minus ions, okay? It says cell A contains a concentrated solution of sodium chloride, okay? We know that at this half of the reaction, the Cl minus is joining up, okay, to form Cl2. Okay, and it's giving away two electrons and there's two of them. So that is what's happening here, is that we are forming chlorine gas. So obviously this is giving away electrons. So this dude here must be um, accepting electrons, okay? So now let us think about this. Let's go see if we can find any half reactions with an Na on it. Um, and there you go. You can see it. Na plus plus an electron gives you Na. Oh, wrong way. So this one, what's going to happen here is Na plus plus an electron is going to form Na. And that is what's happening at Q is that the sodium ions that are freed up from the sodium chloride are taking up electrons to form sodium. Now it says write down the name or symbol of the product formed at electrode R. Okay. Well, let's think about this again. You've got copper chloride is broken up into Cu2 plus plus 2 Cl minus. So again at S, we've got this happening. Okay. So what could be formed here is obviously copper. The Cu2 plus is going to take the two electrons and forms copper. So it says write down the name or symbol. It's Cu and the name is copper. That is the product that's been formed at R. Now it says what happens to the concentration of the electrolyte in cell B when the cell is in operation? Write down only increases, decreases, or remains the same. Okay. So do you agree it says here that cell B contains a concentrated solution of copper 2 chloride ions? I mean copper 2 chloride. Right. And these are carbon electrodes, carbon. And it's asking what, what happens to the concentration of the electrolyte? Well, if you think about it, you've got copper chloride in solution. And as this power supply works and the electrolysis, like electrolysis works, the copper 2 plus ions are going to form copper and the chlorine ions are going to form chlorine gas and bubble off. So do you agree the concentration that's not is a concentration of the electrolyte in cell B is going to decrease. And the reason is that normally with electrolytic cells, is that we have electrodes that provide substance 
that allows us to replace it. So in other words, we'd have normally we'd have at least one of these electrodes been made out of copper so that you could have a transfer of electrons of copper back, copper ions back into solution and so on and so on. But because the copper ions have been removed to form copper and the chloride ions have been removed to form chlorine and because both the carbon rods are made up of carbon, okay, the, the concentration of the electrolyte in cell B is going to decrease. Right, last question and then we're going to start on some electrodynamics. So aluminium is obtained from alumina, which is Al203, aluminium, okay, alumina, using the electrolytic process. And they love asking this, so please make sure you know how to do it. It says in the process, cryolite, which is Na3AlF6, is added to the alumina in order to reduce the melting point of alumina. It says give a reason why it is necessary to melt alumina before electrolysis. Okay, well that's kind of silly because in order for electrolysis to happen, they need to be free ions. And if it's a solid, then obviously it's in a crystalline shape and therefore there are no free ions. But when you melt it, you've got free ions that can move around. So therefore it is pretty obvious that we have to melt the alumina in order for electrolysis to occur. Then it says electrolyte in the cell contains sodium plus ions. Refer to the table and explain why sodium plus ions will not affect the purity of aluminium obtained during this process. Whenever they see Whenever you see things like this, we're talking about stronger oxidizing agents versus reducing agents. That's what you need to be looking for. Okay, so here is Na plus, plus an electron forms Na, okay? And here is aluminium, okay? So if you look at these reactions, it's Na plus, plus an electron forms Na, and here it's aluminium three plus, plus three electrons, forms aluminium. So what you need to say is that because aluminium is further down on the redox table, obviously it is more likely that it will be reduced to form aluminium than sodium will be. That's all you need to say. That's it. End of story. Okay. Right. Let's talk electrodynamics. Let's talk electrodynamics. So what do you know, or what should you know from grade 11? First of all, when a conductor is moved in a magnetic field or when a magnet is moved near a conductor, current flows in that conductor, okay? The amount of current depends on the speed at which the conductor experiences a changing magnetic field, the number of coils that make up the conductor and the position of the plane of the conductor with respect to the magnetic field. So. Faraday's law kind of explained this, okay? So just let me go through this again. When a conductor is moved in a magnetic field, or when a magnet moves near a conductor, the current flows in the conductor. Okay, we learned that last year. The amount of the current depends on how quickly the conductor moves through the magnetic field, the number of coils that make up the conductor, and the position of the plane of the conductor with respect to the magnetic field. Okay, so what I've done is I went and found, where is it? There it is, Faraday's law. Okay, so what we have here is we have a magnet. Right. I'll do it slowly first. I'll do it slowly. Okay, so do you see that we've got... Okay.